So you've just got your brand new Galaxy S24 Ultra. You want to know the first things you got to do with it. Well, this is your definitive list. The first 24, see what I did there, things you should be doing with your Galaxy S24 Ultra. Let's go. The S24 Ultra is a lot of phone. It's a lot of phone. And if this is your first ever Samsung phone, there's some things you should know about how to set it up properly. Today, I'm going to go through a lot of things. Some things are kind of like basic, but others allow you to get a more advanced experience out of your S24 Ultra. We're kind of going to break things down into categories, I guess you could say, sort of a setup process, and then some customization, some camera stuff, and then end with some things that will allow you to get longevity out of your phone and your experience with it. First things first, the first thing you should be doing with a Samsung phone is smart switching from your old one. Whether you have an iPhone or whether you have another Samsung or another Android, smart switch allows you to bring everything from your old one and load it into here. Of course, you are well within your rights to set it up clean. That is what a lot of people probably prefer, but I myself switching so often, I like to bring things with me as I go. During the setup process, the smart switch will actually prompt you to start during that sort of initial phase. And what's great about smart switch is it brings your accounts over with you, particularly if you're coming from a Samsung. You don't have to think about logging into all your Google accounts again. It just brings everything over. There is some measures that Samsung take to make sure they're secure, like making sure on the other phone, you just press your fingerprint to enable and authorize it, but it's so convenient to be able to have that here. The next aspect to this is setting up Samsung Pass. That's number two. If you haven't used Samsung Pass before, I highly recommend going and setting it up for the first time when you get your new phone. The reason why is because from that point on, every time you log into a website or an app, it's going to securely and safely store it in your Samsung account. Because the whole purpose of Samsung Pass is when you switch to another phone two, three years down the line, it's got all of that information stored safely. So you can then just easily log in with your fingerprint into the application again. Much more convenient than having to remember and have a document for all of your passwords and more secure as well. If you already used Samsung Pass before, you just need to go back in and make sure you turn on Samsung Pass on the new phone. If you smart switch, it should bring it across, but it's worth just double checking to make sure it is set up so you can log into your apps again. Number three, setting up your fingerprints. With the S24 Ultra, it has an under display fingerprint scanner, which is ultrasonic in nature. Very secure and very fast to unlock, bam. So go in and set it up. Uh, you can set up up to four different fingers and the setup process has become really smooth now. You used to have to move your finger around on the same spot. Whereas it now, because of the size of the fingerprint sensor, moves it around for you and you just simply put your finger there and it'll register it. Up to four, worth doing. Okay, let's dive into some settings that you should be turning on with your Galaxy S24 Ultra. Number four, 100% recommend doing this, turning on adaptive brightness. Some people might tell you it's not worth doing, but I 100% think you just want to let the phone think for you. A lot of the times I see people manually adjusting brightness all the time, whereas with adaptive brightness, it'll actually learn if you do that and adjust it to be what you like it, as well as learning the lighting environment using the front and rear cameras, which means that it can auto adjust on the fly and if you've manually changed it, it will also save that as well and know your preferences and adjust accordingly. Definitely worth turning on, especially when you go outdoors, because you will actually be able to go past the maximum brightness that you can set it to, to go really, really bright and give you a good viewing experience outside. There's two ways you can activate it. You can either go deep in the display settings and turn it on there, or from the quick panel, press the three dots on the slider and turn it on from there. Something else that is worth taking advantage of is adjusting the resolution to Quad HD+. For some reason, still, Samsung by default set it a Full HD+. I think that's fine if you're not spending a lot of money on your phone. But you're spending a lot of money on your phone. You want to be able to enjoy and take advantage of the maximum resolution possible. So go into display settings, turn on Quad HD+, you will not regret it going into the display settings still, turning on eye comfort shield or adaptive color tone. Now this is a personal choice. You don't have to do this, but definitely for nighttime, enhanced comfort shield is so good for just adjusting the tones of the display to make it better and more comfortable for your eyes. You don't want to be sitting there straining, reading and consuming a lot of blue light. So the comfort shield just makes it more easier to digest in your eyes 
That's weird. You're not digesting food. You're digesting light. I guess it works the same way. And you just make it more comfortable so you don't feel as sort of strainy in your eyes when you're in bed, especially. Adaptive color tone will kind of adapt the tone throughout the day. And that'll do it based on lighting environments. Obviously, that's a feature that's been somewhere else before in another brand. But whatever the case, it's here on the S24 Ultra and there's a toggle to turn it on in the same way that adaptive brightness exists. Number seven, turn on your swipe gestures. I know that the navigation buttons are there and I know that a lot of people cling on to them because it's just convenient. But come on, we're in 2024. You can swipe. It's not too hard. And I say this as someone whose wife continues to use the navigation buttons. So every time I hand her my phone, I don't care that it's still painful for her. It's worth it for me to have the swipe just just turned on. The whole purpose of this is just more freeform interaction. You go into the display settings, navigation, turn on the turn on the gestures. Thank you. You're welcome. Number eight is setting up your always on display. Again, probably a personal thing. Not everyone will want to have an always on display. But what I really like about Always On Display is that Samsung give you so many options to customize it to suit how you like to use it. They've got a new way in here to have your lock screen background as your Always On Display and an even cleverer way of enabling that by allowing you to remove the background where there's subjects involved like kids. Go and sort all that out, have it your own personal preference. You can tap to show, you can have it just be the, the standard classic Always On Display, up to you, but it's in there figure out which way you like and turn it on because it's just a really convenient way to see notifications, to look at the time, and with some widgets that are enabled there as well, it makes it even more functional than before. Number nine, diving into advanced features. This is something that I always turn on first with any Samsung phone that I get, video brightness. Samsung, I've got this toggle in here and I don't know why you just wouldn't, wouldn't want that by default. So go in here and turn it on because it will make the viewing experience a lot better. Number 10, obviously Samsung made a huge deal about AI. I can't believe it's taken me this long into the video to mention it, but if you go into advanced features, there is a menu called advanced intelligence. Go in here and check out every single one of the areas where AI is involved in the S24 Ultra. You can go in here and play with settings inside each individual one, and then it gives you a bit of an idea of which ones you might like to use and which ones maybe aren't for you. Absolutely worth checking out though, and I 100% recommend going in here to look at it. Number 11, still in inside advanced features, going into the lab setting. Labs is where you'll find some experimental features from Samsung that you can enable that can enhance your user experience, but before potentially they might be ready for the big time. But most of the time they're ready enough that they'll work pretty well. The two that Samsung have got in here that I recommend turning on is multi-window for all apps, that means that even if an app doesn't support multi-window, which in 2024 is very hard to find, it will actually still support it. Samsung will force it to happen. Second one here is called dark mode for apps. And this basically means that some apps you can override, even if it's in light mode on your phone, the app will still have dark mode turned on. For now, I can only see YouTube in here, but I'm sure there's other apps that support this or can support this. Number 12, halfway there, adding widgets to your home screen. Samsung have basically been at the forefront of widgets for a very long time now. And they're continually adding smarter and smarter and more contextualized widgets as time goes on. With the S24, they've brought back a widget from last year that I really like, which is the Smart Suggestions widget. This widget will learn your usage patterns of apps that you use and then suggest them in a widget card on your home screen. Go in here and activate that because it'll give you some good recommendations based on how you use your phone. But the other widgets Samsung have brought in this year are to do with camera. I really like the custom camera and the expert raw widget that Samsung have made. So I, for one, would absolutely use this camera one, especially if you're taking photos of your pets or your kids. Every time you press this widget button and you've set it up correctly, it'll save it to the album labeled pets or kids that you've set up. Worth doing if you take a lot of photos of them because it just means you can isolate it from the main camera album and create your own. Definitely give that a shot. Number 13, download GoodLock. 100% download GoodLock. It is an app that allows you full customization of your phone. Just gives you customization. I do have a full video that I made last year about every single way you can use GoodLock and how you can completely customize your phone with it. So go back and check that out. I might eventually make an updated one because they have continually to add and update features in GoodLock to make it even more customizable for your phone. In the Galaxy Store, go check it out. Now we're getting on to camera settings. And this is where there's a stack of things that I want to show you to make using your camera 
the best it can be. Go into the settings and turn on shot suggestions. I know you might think you know what you're doing, but shot suggestions using AI will help you compose the photo in the best way possible. It's got this little horizon line that allows you to balance the photo right, and then a circle that helps you position where the photo should go. Turn this on and in conjunction with that, turn on grid lines, because with grid lines on, no matter which camera mode you're in, you'll be able to have the horizon line show up. And this will be great for videos, helping you keep it balanced and stable, especially if you follow kids around a lot. Highly recommend it. Alongside that, go into Intelligent Options and turn on Scene Optimizer. I know a lot of people on the internet might say that this isn't worth having on, but why wouldn't you want something, boost your photo up and make it look vibrant and HDR and just beautiful that you'll likely add a filter to anyway. So it's social media ready for you to share wherever you want to share it. I'd go turn that on and alongside that, turn on maximum quality because the shutter speed on this thing has no issues anymore. You can snap photos as fast as you want. And with maximum quality turned on, it means you're getting the best photo possible. Number 17, still inside the settings, download the camera assistant. Part of the Good Lock module, and it's available through the Galaxy Store. But in here is where you can basically customize the usage of the camera however you like it. That's probably a little bit extreme. There's some things in here that you can do to make the use of the camera a little bit more to your liking. That sounds better. The first with the S24 Ultra, Samsung having this high resolution five times camera and 200 megapixel main camera can actually have some, some optical quality digital cropping from those sensors. To make sure you have access to those, you can turn them on in the camera system menu. Go into it, turn on the two times, the 10 times, and if you're feeling crazy, the 100 times, but two and 10 will probably be enough. It just means that when you're taking photos, you can more easily switch between those focal lengths and jump back and forth between them. 100 times, in my opinion, should probably be 30, but we have 100. Also in Camera Assistant as well, it should be on by default, but Auto HDR, just make sure that's turned on. That just means that it will automatically process high dynamic range for your photo to give you sort of good exposure for everything that's in there. Something I recommend turning off that is on by default is auto lens switching. Reason why is because with this turned on, it means that it can decide for you whether to switch to the magnification length that you've asked it to. So if you go to five times, but it doesn't think the light is good enough for five times, it won't switch to it. It'll just crop in from the main sensor. Or if you go to three times, the same story can sort of be had. So turning this off means that you control what camera you use and not the phone. And the last one in here that I'd recommend turning on is prioritizing focus over speed. This is sort of what came out from last year's camera assistant, which to help the S23 series have more speed capabilities when capturing images, this toggle was enabled. But you don't have that problem with the S24 Ultra. So I would 100% recommend turning this on so it can prioritize the focusing of subjects that you're taking photos of instead of trying to capture it quicker because you don't have that problem anymore anyway. Jumping out of the settings of the camera and now into the camera itself. In the photo mode, something I recommend turning on is motion photo. I love motion photo for the sheer fact that it captures a mini video before the photo is even taken. Three seconds of footage is captured and allows you to go back anywhere between that three seconds and snap another image. But Samsung have made it better this year in that motion photo can now actually be upscaled to 14 megapixel from the screenshot that you capture. And you can also create a long exposure video from the three seconds that is captured. So if you've got rolling waves, if you've got a car going past, it creates a really dramatic effect and I really like it. So turn motion photo on, doesn't take up much more storage. It's maybe three or four megabytes, but absolutely hit that toggle and leave it on. Regarding video, I would go into video here and I would set your default resolution to 4K 30. I know now with the S24 Ultra, you can switch between any lens at 4K 60, but the optimum stabilization and HDR is at 4K 30. Everything is centered around that resolution and frame rate. Go in there and set it to that as your default. And if you do need to change, it's a lot easier now at the top, Samsung have optimized how you can switch between but default 4K 30. And then you want to move some modes out of the more tab and down into the bottom. The ones I recommend doing here are single take because single take is by far the best camera mode you will use. I made a video about it last year, but Samsung have updated it. So I think I'm going to make an updated one in the coming weeks to show you how the new single take works. Dual video, absolutely bring that in. Uh, if you go watch my secret camera features video, I highlight dual video in a lot of ways, so go check that out. Bring that down into the tab down the bottom and also take out night mode because you never know when you're gonna take a night mode photo and portrait video because that's not sitting down there by default. Take those four out, have them down the bottom. They're the ones I reckon you'll probably need and use the most.
Okay, jumping out of the camera now and tying off some loose ends, I guess you could call it. Number 20, I would go in and set up some modes and routines. Just some little automated things that might help you automate your phone and make it a little bit simpler and more seamless to use. Things like when you're watching YouTube, you can have it be set to do not disturb. Simple, right? You don't want to be disturbed while watching a YouTube video, turn that on. Things like when you get home, having your Wi-Fi automatically turn on or having a modes and routines that will activate your air conditioner. There's just little things like that that you can go in and set up inside the modes and routines. It's great. My One of my favorites that I like recommending is when you hit your car Bluetooth, turning on Spotify. Very simple, but it also takes brain power away from you and puts it onto the phone. Maybe that's a bad thing. Number 21, it sounds a simple one, but a lot of people forget about it, is turning on your backup. So whether that be OneDrive, if you're a Samsung, Microsoft sort of account user, you can have OneDrive backup from your gallery, or if you use Google Photos as your backup, going in and making sure that that's activated because you don't want to lose your precious memories that you create with this new phone, especially with those new camera capabilities. You want to be able to have them saved and stored away securely and safely. So if anything were to happen to your phone, you've got access to them still from the cloud. Number 22, you should go and check for any app updates in the Play Store or in the Galaxy Store and also check for a software update. When you get a new phone, depending on whenever you're watching this video, you might be getting it middle of the year, for example. Samsung will have likely enabled some software updates to come out. Subsequently to that as well is if you go into the about phone, into the software section, you also need to check the security version from Google. Tap on that one and it'll show you if there's any updates from Google's security side of things and the patch can jump from June to January. Those are a couple of things I recommend doing just to make sure you're using the up-to-date latest software and continually check that because updates come out monthly and app updates are regularly coming out too. Could be the starting point of a problem if you don't do this. Number 23, I said I wanted to talk about longevity of your phone and this can give you that. Samsung enabled seven years of OS updates. So functionally speaking, you can get a lot of life out of this phone, but you want to look after it too. Samsung last year brought in battery protection. It was a very limited feature though, in that it actually limited your battery to 85% charge. The battery protection on here has three different options. There's a real basic primitive one. There's also a similar one to last year that limits it to 80% charge, or there's auto, which throughout the night, if you're someone who charges your phone when you go to bed, it will adapt its charging speed to suit when you're going to wake up. So it actually is clever enough to sort of learn your usage patterns and your sleeping patterns. Don't be creeped out. The way it does this is it kind of charts when you pick up your phone for the first time every morning. It's kind of sad that that's what we do. The first thing we do is pick up our phone. So it knows that it'll charge that last 5% when you're about to wake up. And that way it's sort of limiting and preserving the battery to last a bit longer. Still get 100%, but it's doing it a lot smarter. And the last one, number 24, enjoy your phone. Simply get out there and enjoy taking photos, reading news articles, using the summarize feature and AI, removing things from background, just getting out there and sharing your experience with an incredible smartphone. That's it, that's the last point. It's, it might seem a little bit philosophical, but I think there's too many people out there trying to tell you how you should use your phone. And I realize that this video is one of those. Ultimately speaking, I'm giving you a bit of a guide. You take that away and enjoy it however you like. Thank you for watching and stopping by. If this is your first time here, consider going back and watching some of my other Samsung content. I've got a host of stuff on the channel. Also subscribe because that way you at least will get to see any other stuff that I come up with and there's gonna be a lot. And between now and my next video, you can come and find me on my socials. I've got Twitter slash X and also I'm on Instagram. I'll see you in the next one. You.